in to the Jordy Colada show. Wave your hand out there, baby! Shout out to the show. She puts the pinky into the nostril. Man, look at that. Healthy competition, there's nothing like it. Y'all grow up. The line's wrapped around the stadium. <laughs> Different strengths. Mm -hmm. I just lost a tooth. It's gonna be fun. You know, we might have a story. I love what you're doing. Ogeron wants to take us fishing this afternoon. Sharif, you play for the bad boys of the SEC, man. We don't apologize <laughs> to anybody. A lot of people are saying you're going to be wearing number seven. I don't really know. I want to. <laughs> See, look crazy, Bill. <laughs> Good feet on the old man. This is from Mexico. Oh, no. 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 Welcome in to a Thursday edition of the Jordy Colada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet, live here on this Thursday. Hit that go, uh, hit that like button, share button, comment button. As always, Go Chevrolet, great inventory online that you can find at GEAUXChevrolet.com. Metropolitan Health Group, Real Doctors, Real Solutions. Bringing you our phone line every single day. Speaking of our phone line, we're going to talk to Billy Embody coming up here at 8 a.m. Embody, we'll talk, uh, we'll talk all of it, uh, basketball recruiting, uh, LSU football, Walker Howard, uh, all of it with Embody coming up here at, uh, at 8 a.m. Uh, this morning. We will uh, we'll get to, uh, to a little bit more of the Walker Howard stuff, but I'm, a, I'm, I'm about Walker Howard it out. I know. Oh, I mean, he's going to Ole Miss. <laughs> Yeah, still, you know, still I mean, heard about Walker Howard. Everybody's talking about it. I was I listening mean, to it on Dusty geez. and Danny this morning too. I mean, people are just they they're like, what? But well, now it's going to become a national story. It's been it a local is. story. It's been a local story. Now it's going to become a national story because he's they know where he's going. Yeah. Nobody was really talking about you know like the emotional stuff of Walker Howard transferring from LSU from a national no, level. No, not at all. It's been a local story. Now it's going to kind of move into more of the the national scope of it. Uh, but now with, it's like a disbelief. People are like, why would he go to Ole Miss from yeah. there? Like, he's going to play. Yeah. They're not good. Like, how could you leave LSU for Ole Miss? Like, that's the national look of this. Eight and four loading. Yeah, What's that? Up? Eight and four loading. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? Uh, and it looks like Spencer Sanders, the quarterback from Oklahoma State, who's got one year left, is going to commit to Ole Miss at some point coming yes. up here. Hmm. Uh, which I believe would, would probably push Jackson Dart out. I think that he'll probably go back into the, the portal, which, you know, I mean, like I said, Ole Miss is a very accessible program. You can access them on YouTube through the season. They document a lot of it. Now, look, they control the message. They are putting out what they want you to see. So you're not seeing everything, but you see you see a lot. You get to know the people. You get to see the coaches. You get to kind of see them at practice, which is where you get a real good feel of, you know, how the coaches feel about their team. And it was really evident that Lane Kiffin – did not like Jackson Dart. I mean, it was just like a lot of eye rolling, a lot of just, you know, like, what do you see? What are you looking at, man? Why you know? is that? Why would you like that with him? Uh, because I, I don't think that Kiffin has a lot of patience mm -hmm. for the simple things of playing quarterback. He makes it very easy to play quarterback yeah. in his system. I think that he's he, he really does have a great reputation of you know, being – a quarterback whisperer. I mean, mm -hmm. he's being able to coach that position. And in football, I mean, that's a hell of a tool on the recruiting trail. I guarantee you he threw everything he had at Walker Howard and it made an imprint on just, you know, who he's worked with, who he's developed, the scheme he runs, the responsibility of that position in his offense, yeah. the things that he's going to put you in the position to make really big plays and put up really big numbers, mm -hmm. which is going to, you know, do good for you in postseason awards NFL draft status, all yeah. of that stuff is going to work out for everybody. And then Lane Kiffin can turn around and sell it to the next five star. Right. Look what I did to Walker Howard. Mm -hmm. I mean, look what he did with Blake Sims, 3,000 well, I mean, yards. Remember Jacob <laughs> Coker? Uh, I, me and Ron were talking about Jacob Coker the other day. He actually sells insurance. No doubt he does. <laughs> like he is actually an insurance. And he won the national championship with Lane Kiffin. That's wild. I mean, that that's... That should be on the top of Lane Kiffin's resume. Yeah. You know, I mean, of like Blake Sims, Jacob Coker. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, you know, I mean, e even AJ McCarron, yeah, to a degree. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, AJ McCarron was was struggling mightily until Kiffin got there, and it just turned into this really, really good college football quarterback. Um, so. Here we are trying to not talk about Walker Howard, and five minutes later we're still talking about Walker Howard. But could there be two more Ole Miss quarterback names than Jackson Dart and Walker Howard? No. No. That's a, I mean, that sounds like Ole Miss dot on com. That. It does. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's straight out of the Eli Manning book of it quarterbacks. Is. It is. It, it is. Uh, it, no, it, de it definitely. Matt Corral. Yep. Fits for straight sure. Straight out of Oxford. Chad um, Kelly. <laughs> Yeah. Machine gun. Uh, so we'll see, man. Uh, but I guess the lead story is last night, number 16 Auburn rolls into the Maravich Center and just pummels LSU 67-49. Uh, look, there's not a lot of good that you can say about LSU basketball Pain. right now. Um, K.J. Williams had, had 16. Uh, Trey Hannibal had 16. But LSU drops its fifth straight conference game. Uh, Auburn and Bruce Pearl, I thought, really ran circles around the program last night. It was painful to see how bad LSU is on offense. And they had a nice little run that they came out in the second half uh, where they pulled within two, um, right, like, right within the first five yeah. minutes of the second half. It was a 13-5 run. And then – in succession, uh, just turnovers, bad offensive sets, um, and Auburn ran away with it. I mean, it was it, it got close for a minute, but for the most part, that was that was a track meet that Auburn just they they housed LSU. LSU and, turned over the ball eleven times. Yeah, and, and you know that's a number that plagues LSU. But the numbers that really you look at and you're like, am I seeing this right? <laughs> Three point attempts. <laughs> 29% from the field mm -hmm. and 20% from the three-point line. I don't care who you play. I don't care where you play them. I don't care what level they are. It's going to be tough to win a basketball game when you just can't score. Yeah. <laughs> you just you, – you, you can't – I mean, what defenses are doing to LSU is downright disrespectful in the game. I mean, like, if you watch the way that teams defend LSU, it is the – it's as high amount of disrespect as you can pay anybody in basketball. They play three feet off of them. They say, dare them to shoot it. Play three feet off and I mean, challenge you know, it if he goes up. Trey Hannibal is a really good player. You know what I mean? I think that he is a he, – he, but to me, he looks like a running back. He looks like he should be playing tailback. At a Division One like SEC school, he reminds me so much of Tack Minor that it is scary. I mean, like they've got the same build, they've got the same movements, they've got the same game. I mean, he's not as fast as Tack was, but Tack was extraordinarily fast for a basketball player because he was a football player. He was a running back. He was a running back with the ball that. Really, I would say to Tack today, to his face, couldn't really shoot. But if he got past you, he was getting to the rim. But once you had about three, four, five games of film on it, it's like, hey, play four feet off of him. He's, just dare him to shoot. If he hits two out of five, you're still winning. And he ain't going to hit two out of five. The disrespect that... Teams show LSU offensively, it, it's it's just because they can't score. Do you think having Moani Wilkinson and Justice Hill would have helped at uh, all I mean, last night? I guess it would have helped because it would have been more options, but I've seen those guys play. Right. You know, I mean, they're not Kevin Durant. I know. You know. They need somebody that can score 30. Yeah. They need somebody that can, at any given time, go nuclear. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, like, hit – Four or five straight three pointers where you got to call timeout. Yeah. Like, fellas, we got to go. They just they don't have that guy, and it's unfair, I think, to judge McMahon, the staff, mm -hmm. the program here in year one. The thing that's most depressing about to to me is that that's where LSU was trending. That's where LSU was going. Mm -hmm. LSU was right there 
of being relevant in basketball. They, they were, it, it, was, it was this close to becoming a consistent, not year in, year out national championship contender, but you felt like you had a chance in the league every year. About a week away, huh? They missed the, the news about the NCAA taking away that rule, right? Wasn't it like a week after they fired Will Wade oh, yeah. and they made the rule? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, everything has been <laughs> retroactive. And look, Wade's about to get his hearing. And that, this mm-hmm. is not public information you, that the dates haven't put out there. But Wade's about two weeks away from getting his hearing. And I can tell you, if Sean Miller's not not guilty, mm-hmm. they're going to have a lot to prove on Will Wade in, 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 in that in that that realm but could he not be enough of of that in the sense of just it's it's depressing in 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 watching lsu basketball and this is not an indictment on matt mcmahon it really is not you know i mean i I think that the 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 cards he was dealt was something that is very incomparable to anything we've ever seen in in collegiate sports i mean really i mean he took the job in 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 april and he didn't have a player he had three walk-ons you know so they asked him to put together a competitive roster in less than a year very unfair and then to judge him within the league that you know the sec that has turned into a very solid good basketball league and lsu Man, it it feels a lot like the Trent Johnson days. It felt, you know, it feels a lot like. What are those days? I'm not the Johnny familiar. Jones days. Yeah, I was gonna say, mm-hmm. For me, it would be the Johnny Jones days. I remember days. Johnny Jones days. Those days were horrible. It was just pain. I Trent Johnson that. was worse. Was that before? Was that, was that was the it was tuba? right before. Was that okay. when they Johnny. took the tuba player? They took the tuba player. Oh, God. What do you mean? What like, do you mean? They took a guy from the band and put him on I the mean, basketball they team. They did not. He was like yes, 6'10". They did. Not only did they take the guy they out of the band not. and put him on the basketball he was team. He starter. He started. Why? <laughs> because they had their players. <laughs> they could not recruit. Did he play basketball before, though? Yes, right? Not, not a lot. Not, <laughs> he, not enough. He wasn't enough Where to you would sell him player. as an SEC starter. What? Andrew Del Piero was his name. <laughs> The seven there, footer. Stewie? I need to see. He not as bad as you thought. Not as bad as you thought he would be, but still a band member as a starting center in yeah, the league. Yeah, that's bizarre. you know what I mean. Really, the story is how good he was, not how bad he was. But Trent Johnson <laughs> was the example of, and I, you know, I don't want to get into all this, but Trent Johnson was the example of basketball schools that do not cheat. Okay. Like he he did not play any of the games. Yeah. He thought he could get out there and recruit on good Uh, spirit. You know what I mean? Like, the moms will like me. (laughs) You know, like, they'll see that I'm a good, clean-cut person. Right. And then here comes Calipari Patino with, you know, 100,000 bucks behind him. Like, Coach, we think you're a great guy. He's just not going to go to your school. (laughs) You know, like, we we like you. (laughs) But we're not going to go play for you. Um, so, you know, I mean, like, that's what happened. He was running into, like, we got to get band members to play oh. because nobody wants to play here because they just could not get a player. What they a could not story. get a player. Did and everyone Trent come Jan- to see him Trent play? Johnson failed upward. He actually, like, I believe won a single-digit amount of SEC games while he was here in really? multiple years. After his first year, he took a first-year team, John Brady's, okay. John Brady's last team. Like Garrett Temple, Chris yeah. Johnson, all those guys. He took them to the Sweet 16. Really? And North Carolina, the national champ, wow. knocked him out. So he's a good basketball coach. Yeah. Like, I mean, like if you hand deliver him talent, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like he can coach it. Right. But if you're like, hey, man, we need you to go get the talent. Yeah, he can't Then recruit. coach it. He's like, you know, he's lost. He gets, especially in, in the South. Mm-hmm. Like he came from Stanford. Okay. Right? Where the recruiting is much different of a landscape. Yeah. You're, lif- you're looking for a totally different type of player. You know, you got to be like academically qualified. Right. You know what I mean? That's usually coming from a legacy family mm-hmm. from Stanford. Yeah. You know, things like you come to the SEC. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, I mean, <laughs> just get in school. Kid's got a 1.8. We got to sell that he's got a 2.3. You know, like, you got to get him in. You know what I mean? Tuba player? I mean, Man, that wingspan, though. Yeah, but Jeez. Katie, he doesn't I mean, look like a basketball. No, he does not. But I mean, my God, he's tall. No, he was and seven his foot. Arms are very long. Yeah, he was seven foot. I mean, yeah. well, there's seven a picture foot. of him holding his tuba too, but I couldn't get it. <laughs> seven foot. Um, That's bizarre. And then Johnny Jones 
got here, and Johnny Jones would play the game a little bit, but he wouldn't put both feet in. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, he kind of like – it's like, I get you. Flirty with it. Yeah, mm-hmm. right, right. And he just, you know, with all due respect, I love Johnny Jones. I, I don't think that he likes me anymore after his time here. But just, <laughs> we had to cover the program. You know, he just he just was not a good basketball yeah. coach. Yeah. You know, he was a really good recruiter. Mm-hmm. He, was a, he was a great recruiter. He was Dale Brown's top recruiter when really? Dale Brown was here. Okay. You know, so, I mean, like, think about the guys that came through here yeah. when, you know, Dale was here. A lot of that was Johnny Jones. Yeah. But if you gave him the clipboard and said, all right, coach, draw it up. It just what his strong suit. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he seemed very stoic. I used to go to his luncheons once yeah, a month. He's a great guy. Yeah. Like he's got a great personality. Yeah. He's a great storyteller. He's a great recruiter. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if you if you met him, you'd fall in love with him. Uh-huh. Um, he just he was over his head. Right. With the basketball deal. Yeah. And then, you know, Wade came in here and he was like the perfect storm of what LSU needed. Mm-hmm. He was hungry. He was motivated to build a program and a winner, and he wanted LSU to be relevant. Yeah. And he was not going to sleep. He was not going to rest until it was done. Yeah. You know, and that was the relentless passion that Wade would sell that everybody embraced. Passionate is and, exactly and, how to describe him. And you can feel last night in that arena. I was there last week versus Florida mm-hmm. in that arena. The apathy is setting back in with the program mm-hmm. where if you don't have that if you don't have that igniter, mm-hmm. if you don't have that guy that can light it and and really put it in your face yeah. every day, Dale Brown, Will Wade. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, Coaches have struggled to find and build a rapport with the fan base and the community because, and this is, this is honest, and I love Scott Woodward. He's the right guy for the job. He's the one that's going to turn LSU's athletic program into a monster. But the basketball program, particularly the men's basketball program, is the stepchild of the entire organization. Yeah. You don't necessarily have to have it to succeed. Mm-hmm. It's kind of almost like a, it, it's almost like an accessory yeah. if it is good. But if it brings any negative light to overall what we're trying to accomplish, we're okay going 500. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're mm-hmm. okay just like sprinkling a little love to it, stay in an arena that is, you know, really underperforming mm-hmm. as far as get competitive to the league. <laughs> You know, I mean, that's putting it mildly. Yeah, yeah. right. I mean, it's just got rats in the place. That's that's where LSU basketball sits yeah. in the grand scheme of the conversation. Because if they did care about it, and this is the truth, if they did really, really care about it, you could have fought for Will Wade and kept it relevant. Yeah, you're right, Jordy. You know, I mean, really and truly, because that makes it sound bad when you say that. I know, like, but it it's makes true. It, it almost makes LSU look kind of look bad in well, a sense. Yeah. It's like, but you have to understand, LSU was looking at a scenario during that time where they were they were talking about messing with football. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. know if they necessarily could have, would have. I mean, Odell was handing out money. They paid it back. It was stupid. They got the stuff on the – I mean, but ultimately – did they really have them by the balls to like cut their legs out? Mm-hmm. If LSU thought that, you have to do away with Will Wade. Uh, who's a bigger supporter and loves Wade more than me? Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> but if LSU football is in jeopardy of yeah. being messed with, you sacrifice whatever you have to you to keep the that thing. Save the arm. You can't. You got to, right? And I believe that's really what ultimately happened. You know, I mean, ultimately, the NCAA said, and you can tell by what they gave back to LSU, they found nothing new on Wade, right? All that time that went by, everybody, well, when's the notice of allegations coming? When are they going to prove what they found on Wade? When are they going to say what they found on Wade? When they ultimately had to do it, because, I mean, you know, people are like, what? This is three and a half, four years now. You haven't produced any piece of evidence that says, here's the smoking gun, here's what you got, here's why you got a firing. They came with a bunch of stuff from like VCU from like oh 2017. <laughs> like, you know, like gave it and dropped it off on a new president's doorstep at LSU that said, hey, we got all this stuff going on at Title IX, <laughs> at sexual harassment, you got less miles, you got all this stuff we're dealing with. You know. 
And now we got to deal with the basketball program too, man. Just look, if they want this guy, let's get rid of this guy so we can get the NCAA out of our, out of our kitchen. Like, get him out of here. And all they want is Wade? Kick him out of the house. Go ahead. Get, get rid of him. Just as long as they're going to mess with the football program. And I guarantee you this. Nothing's going to happen to the LSU men's basketball program as far as penalties are concerned with the NCAA. Because LSU did the NCAA a solid. They served up the head that they wanted in Wade. And in return, they're telling LSU exactly what LSU is. Like, we won't mess with it. Because the NCAA, they're saying exactly what LSU says. What's LSU basketball mean in the grand scheme of the whole operation? Nothing. Damn, Jordy. I mean, I mean, Kansas and Bill Self yeah. are winning national championships <laughs> with the same amount of violations that they said LSU was guilty of. Mm -hmm. The same exact amount. And Bill Self is the national coach of the year. <laughs> like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't want to get, we, we all know how I feel, but I mean, like, this is even more on LSU. They don't really care about men's basketball. And I don't, you know, like, I know that there was some people up there that would be pissed off to hear that statement. And I, I know that there's some people that work hard to make the basketball program relevant, make it, you know, competitive, make it compliant, make it all of those things, make it healthy, get team doctors, you got trainers, you got all of those people that put their time, energy, and effort into making the basketball program good. But I, I don't believe they, they have a, a, a shot as far as just the support goes, right? I mean, like, it, it's never going to be a monster. Mm -hmm. It's never going to be competitive i mean look look around what it could be yeah auburn saying. has committed to it mm -hmm. yeah, I was it tennessee has committed to it florida committed has committed to it. to it that's about the ceiling yeah of what LS alabama mm -hmm. has committed to it that's a that's the ceiling of what you have to go get a guy and this is not an indictment on matt mcmahon because you can't ask him to be somebody who he's not but he's not going to go sell the program He's not going to go hand out the tickets. He's not going to, you know, put a general hat on and do a and do a photo shoot. And that's not an that that's not a knock on him. Right. Because if you don't have that, you can't do that. Because it almost comes off worse when you don't have it. It's like you forced. It's it. like Lane Kiffin. Mm -hmm. Oh God! You Remember when they threw the, the the FAU polo on him, the, fl the, the at Florida Atlantic, and yeah. he was doing the owl up, and he was squinting into the sun. <laughs> and the, the the polo was unbuttoned. I can't even see. You know what I mean? Like I'm he was like drunk. It, you, he was he was saying before they said action, he was saying I don't want to do this. Yeah. <laughs> like I hate this. I, I hate this. He's like, come on, coach. I mean, you know, yeah, <laughs> a lot of people paying you a lot yeah, of money, man. Back, Can you just do this for us? Uh, I guess. You think he throws a little dig at Brian Kelly with the, with the Walker Howard? Oh, like, yeah, When he sure. gets on campus, they make a video of him on the podium again? Absolutely. Sure. Like, I can see that happening tomorrow. Um, it's a bad place. Well, let's move on to women's basketball, then. Yeah, shout out women's basketball. <laughs> They're playing Arkansas tonight. If Angel Reese has another double double tonight, she'll tie the program record of 19 consecutive double doubles, which oh, wow. Sylvia Fowles leads or has that record. Um, can I bet on that? She's going to get that. Yes, I think she will. I mean, so that's a, that's this a lot. LSU is Arkansas's only SEC loss this season. So if they sweep the series tonight, they move on to 19 and 0. Which again, they will. Yes, they will. Um, I mean, like you know. I, the, the, the best part of last night's men's game is when they showed Mulkey on the big screen. I know. Jesus. <laughs> I mean, I mean oh. was she asleep? Can I coach the game? <laughs> like, you want me to coach Matt? What's up? <laughs> Again, man, I, I hate that this comes across as a, as a shot, and I hope it does not on Matt McMahon. No, because it doesn't. It doesn't he doesn't have it, – it's, it's unfair to judge him and his staff on this season and what they were dealt, mm -hmm. right? I mean, if you look around the league and you look around the SEC, well, I mean, I'm trying to find the kindest way to say this. They've got two and a half SEC players. Really. I mean, uh, uh, K.J. Jefferson is 
an SEC player. Mm -hmm. I still believe Adam Miller, night in, night out. People are defending him, game planning him. I know he's struggling, but he's an SEC caliber player. Mm -hmm. And I would put Hannibal as about a half of a league player. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like he's a threat that you can't just overlook and say, don't worry about him. You got to guard him. Now, you've seen how they guard him. They let him shoot it. But if you give him any type of space, he's getting to the rack. Yeah, right? he's consistent. You know, I mean, he would be a great tailback. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, like, right. I mean, like, he would be a great, like, Tack Miner. I would tell him all the time, what are you doing like, playing basketball, walk dude? Walk across how the many five foot tech. ten <laughs> point guards do you know in the NBA? Zero. <laughs> I mean, at least in the NFL, you got a shot. I mean, he would be a stud running back. I think people are a little hard on Adam Miller. I think they because, are. like, I mean, he's, did I say KJ Jefferson? I meant KJ he's, Williams. He's obviously coming off of ACL, and you saw what happened with NBA players coming off of ACLs, like the best of them. Clay Thompson was coming off of ACL and couldn't shoot for the first six months of the season almost. So it's 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 kind of like I think he's still trying to get comfortable with his knee. And, like, the type of game he plays, he yeah. has to be explosive. Yeah, you got to have that bounce. Been, right, and he hasn't been explosive. you got to have the bounce. Well, maybe Hannibal's the next Tony Parker. Uh, Kevin yeah, Tate, in other words, no. Mac McMahon is another Trent NBA. Johnson and Johnny Jones, Jones like according to five. Jordy. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that Matt McMahon is Trent Johnson and Johnny Jones. I think that Matt McMahon is a better basketball coach than both of those guys. I think that ultimately – he can recruit. Can he recruit as good as Johnny Jones? I don't know. I know he can recruit better than Trent Johnson because at least he's going to recruit. So he's going to be better at that part of it than Johnson. Is he going to get the four or five star guys that LSU's been getting the last couple of years? We'll see. We'll see. But, I mean, it, they feel so far away. You know what I mean? They, they, they just feel so far from being relevant in the league. I mean, I, I, I don't know how they get above eighth in the league. You know, it's just, it's look, this is a depressing strong. time for me right now, man. I, I may be, I, I may be, you know, I may be too far in the forest here. And I may just be super depressed about it. Because the most the depressing about it, but yes, about the basketball thing okay. is because LSU was that close. Yeah, yeah, they really were. You know what I mean? I look at Alabama. I look at Tennessee. I, that's where LSU's supposed I mean, you to were be. A, what Elite Eight two years ago? Yes. I mean, with those types of players, I mean, I'm watching Julian Phillips at Tennessee makes me want to vomit. I mean, makes me want to puke. You know, what I mean, like to think that LSU could have that team intact right now and be competitive and have somebody that has the juice on the sideline to sell it to the public. Right? I mean, think of what LSU... The, the LSU-Auburn game last year, I got an RV, packed up Ronnie Rance, that freaking <laughs> bum, Casey McKenzie. <laughs> my, my wife, my kid, my dad... In a in an RV that had no AC, and we drove to the game. Oh my god! Wait, when was this? It was in late December. We went to LSU Auburn <laughs> because we were so fired up about Bruce Pearl and Will Wade. It was the first night that Justice. It was the first night that Justice Williams ever played for LSU. Bruce Pearl just got, <laughs> went to jail. <laughs> I mean, and now what was there? Four thousand people there last night. Uh, Coach, I can't tell you. <laughs> I mean, people leave it before halftime. This is not an indictment on, on, on McMahon. It's just this is where the basketball program is again. I can't, I, I'm not, I can't deal with this, man. The we, dark days are here again. Coach, though. Yeah, you I get it. A bit I get it, but break. I mean, I'm looking around. It, yeah, you it's could, a long way out. A We're deep in the woods again, man. This is dark. This is dark days. <laughs> This hard. feels like Trent Johnson. This feels like Johnny Jones. I can't deal with that. The light's not here. I can't deal with that. We're just I'm not. halfway through a first year coach's season, though. So but maybe I mean, we just calm down a little Katie, bit. Katie, look, we're just halfway through. Katie, Brian you had me believing they were going to beat Auburn yesterday. I know. Well, I mean, I mean I get they the, they the hell out of here. They couldn't even score 50 upset. points against them. <laughs> it was a high school score. I mean, you they know, were struggling you know, to get to 50. You thought it could happen, too. Yeah, but then the next 15 minutes happened. I know. I know. I mean, like, 
I know. Talk Hordo. me off the ledge, man. Baseball Hordo season. Get me out, you know. Get me off of here. I mean, I, I I don't see a light. I don't. I feel like I'm in Trent Johnson <laughs> the, land. The light is not there. Yeah. I feel like Johnny Jones is on the floor. I mean, I just it, this is. I can't deal with this. It's bad. I know. I don't even want to go to the games. Let's talk to some people about it. <laughs> you want to do some voicemails and call-ins? Sure. Should we take a break and come back to it? Or do we have some voicemails? Uh, probably do. We can take a break and come back. What's the number? 225-229-7741. Uh, remember Barker Brothers Plumbing and Works? Barker Brothers Plumbing and Works. Get in touch with them today. 225-776-2431 is the phone number. Jordy Collada Show. Mention the Jordy Collada Show and save 15%. They're number one in a number two business. They can help you out commercially, residentially. Uh, Barker Brothers Plumbing and Works. They got a couple of trucks working East Baton Rouge Parish every single day. So if you need a job done on this side of the river, they can help you today. 225-776-2431. Mention the show. Save 15%. Barker Brothers Plumbing and Works. We'll open up the phone lines. You got to take. Don't suck. <laughs> Talk LSU basketball if you want. Am I too dramatic on this? <laughs> Talk are, we too, the are we too far in the woods? I'm telling you, it's dark down here, man. I, I do not see any sunlight. I, I, mean, I think you're being a little dramatic. Does he have, like, what players does he have coming in That's next what I'm year? saying. Besides know. Corey Chess. That's what I'm saying, man. I mean, like. This is not good. Let's, let's just give it a little more. I'd rather go recruit the football team. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they got some. Give me the top five. Brian Thomas. <laughs> that's great basketball player. Brian Thomas would be a problem. Quincy. Quincy would be an issue. Uh, I mean, I, who else? Give me somebody else. I mean, like, I, I want. I guess we need size. Who, we asked, who did we ask? BJ. He said Kayshawn could play. Yeah. He's gone. He's pretty good at basketball. What sure. are y'all talking about? Well, I mean, look, I mean we're, tr we're trying serious? to get Matt McMahon some players around here. <laughs> like, we got we to do what we got to do. Okay. We'll Brian be back Thomas with your phone it, calls. 225-229-7741. Looking to book a dumpster, but no idea how? We've made it quick and easy for you. Check out our website at moralesrolloffs.com. Let Morales Rolloffs know your desired delivery date, and finally, provide your contact details. To make payment, look out for an email invoice with all your booking details. On delivery day, our driver will notify you through text and email that your dumpster is ready and on the way. Now you know how easy and convenient it is. Call Morales Roloffs at 225-427-0000 for your dumpster. Hey, Baton Rouge, when traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, whether you need to fill up your vehicle or your belly, stop by GoMart and On The Go Deli. GoMart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you might need on your trip. So stop by GoMart at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left. And visit Tom and Wright Granning and their awesome team at GoMart. Don't let the name fool you. Men's Total Health has offerings for the ladies, too. Guys, is your wife or partner suffering from urinary incontinence, low sexual desire, or pain during sex? Then the O-Shot might be for her. Don't let it scare you. It's totally natural. It's PRP. And Mike Roach and the crew at Men's Total Health will make you as comfortable as you can be. Contact me for more information, katie at jordycoladashow.com, and I'm happy to tell you everything that Men's Total Health has to offer for the ladies. Donaldsonville Glass and Body, the trusted name in frame, body, and automotive paint repair since 1977. They have served their customers for over 45 years. You can find them online at dgbauto.com or stop in and see them Railroad Avenue and Division Street out in Donaldsonville, Louisiana. Look, they can help you with your insurance claims. They can make the repair process as stress-free as possible. I'm speaking from experience here. I've got numerous windshields, body repair, all done by Kenny and the crew over at Donaldsonville Glass and Body. They are, without question, the most well-equipped shop in the area. Stop in and see them today. Shop them online, dgbauto.com, or stop in and see the crew over in Division Street in Donaldsonville, Louisiana. Donaldsonville Glass and Box.
Hey, fellas, it's Jordy Collada for my friends over at Men's Total Health. Guys, do you suffer from fatigue, decreased libido, erectile dysfunction, weight gain or loss, loss of muscle mass, signs of depression, anxiety, hair loss, mental fog, general loss of interest? Then you might be suffering from low testosterone. Go see my friend Mike Roach and his great team over at Men's Total Health over in Metairie at menstotalhealth.net online. And stop in and see how they can change your life today. A simple shot and some knowledge from Mike Roach can get you back up, moving with your energy, get your sex drive back, build your muscle mass, make you feel young again. All online, menstotalhealth.net. Red Stick Sports, a local staple in Baton Rouge to all sports fans, was founded back in 1981 and has remained a family business for over 40 years. Today, they still have the great selection on the floor, but they're also a leader in custom apparel for businesses, sports teams, and other groups. Take it from us, everybody over here at FM Digital Media. They help us out with all of our apparel. Let them help you out today. Go ask for Cody over at Red Stick Sports. Check him out online at redsticksports.biz. I was embarrassed about my smile. Are you unhappy at yours? Do you not smile back at yourself? I called my friend, Dr. Spillers, over at Johnson and Spillers. He fixed my smile, and now everywhere I go, people are complimenting it after the work that Dr. Spillers and the staff did to my mouth. They can do it to yours. Get in touch with them. JohnsonSpillers.com. Two locations, one in Gonzales, one in Baton Rouge. Easy to find them. JohnsonSpillers.com. All right, welcome back here to the Jordy Colada Show, driven and powered by Ghost Chevrolet, live here on this Wednesday morning. Make sure to hit that like button, share button, comment button if you don't mind. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscription button. If you want to know when we go live, just click that bell and you'll know we're putting some content out. Last night, I sat in with Matsuk for the last hour of Mic'd Up. Show's doing great. It was yes. uh, good to see and uh, and be with the boys last night. Stewie on the ones and twos with old Ronald. I saw Ron up in there, uh, hosting Ron, him up in there. Ron's the, the pills man. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. And Gotta the get bets. that man mic'd up when he speaks yeah. on it. And the bets man. Yeah, he, he really is. is. Oh, my goodness. Really is. Coach, he's hitting. He's, <laughs> he's always in his phone uh -huh. <laughs> looking at the bets. Yes. Uh, Jack Ballard was in there. Their social media guy was right. in there last night. But uh, Mikey got talking on the baseball team here and hopefully this can maybe get us out of this dark territory of this <laughs> basketball stuff that we've been talking about because i got it bad uh this morning but mikey had me he had me going last night on this base i had no idea that they had five projected first rounders on their pitching staff like i i just kind of was like tommy tanks and dylan cruz our boys were gonna be all right and it, i mean he kind of laid out some of the names and what the possibilities are for potential rotations for the weekend. First off, I can't wait to see Paul Skeens play. Yeah. I mean, it's rare that you get a guy in college baseball that can do all of what he does. Pitch, hit, catch. both sides, catch. I mean, like, he is a freak of a prospect. And he's 97, 98. Well, they got him kind of like the ace of the staff, right? I mean, if he's the Friday night guy... And then they say when he hits, he could, like, bat third through fifth. I mean, who is this guy? <laughs> Shohei. I'm in. Give me a Skeens jersey. Same. Skeet. <laughs> but Skeet on the back. All Skeet team. All Skeet. <laughs> uh, but Before, then some yeah. of these other names, like uh, Ty Floyd. Uh, Grant Taylor, of course, they got the guy that transferred in from Vanderbilt, Christian Little, Thatcher Hurd <laughs> from UCLA. That's all time UCLA. <laughs> I mean, that is great. California. It sounds like either an Ole Miss quarterback or a UCLA pitcher. Thatcher, yeah. <laughs> he's surfing on the weekends. Yeah, bro, it's tearing just, up some gnarly waves. Just what is it, bro? <laughs> yeah. What's up, man? <laughs> What's the deal? What'd you say, bro? <laughs> You're up in the rotation, bro. <laughs> You're pitching today. Oh, oh cool, sweet, man. Sweet, <laughs> man. It's beautiful weather. Catch some barrels. Throw some strikes. <laughs> You're good at that, Jordy. <laughs> 
but I mean, these guys are like five first round projected picks. I had no idea. Yeah, I mean, Mikey's wild. talking about like them going like wire to wire number one team. Yeah. Like preseason one, start the season one, finish the season one. Mikey's team did that. Uh, they didn't go wire to wire. They didn't, they didn't hold the number one spot the entire season, but they started there and they ended there. Uh, Mikey said they could be better than, than their team. I mean, that's, that, that's saying a lot. Yeah, right. And I put a lot of stock. Obviously, look, man, you're not coming here to get my thoughts on baseball. I'm hijacking <laughs> other people's opinions of baseball. Uh, and bringing them here, it. most you know, pretty <laughs> much. Show over here. My took, yeah. I mean, we're gonna be leaning a lot on like, Doug ooh. Thompson, a <laughs> lot on Ronnie ooh. Rance. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta call the skipper. Exactly. <laughs> Gotta call Skip. My took. Uh, but to hear what they're saying about this team and just some of the prospects, I can't wait to watch them, man. I yeah. mean, really. I mean, their outfield alone with Dylan Cruz, uh, Josh Pearson, who's a stud. Uh, is just going to be fun to watch. Like, how do you take that dude out the line? And you can't. I mean, <laughs> if you bat, to. I mean, to think if he's the third batter on this team as a sophomore in a lineup that features Skeet, Cruz, Trey Morgan, Trey Morgan. I mean, like all of these cats. How good is he? I mean, how good is he? Uh, so I can't wait to watch him play. All right, your phone calls, 225-229-7741. Voicemails. What we got, Stewie? Where are we leading off? But we got wait, text messages. Can we, can we just shout out Jeff and Kenner first for sure. setting up a GoFundMe for Stewie? Shout out Jeff. For a down payment for his car. I think I'm the only donor so far. It's linked on our Twitter. Go to our Twitter. Twitter. Click Ooh, on the GoFundMe. Twitter. 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 <laughs> tweener. Go to our Twitter. Tweener. Click on the GoFundMe and, and throw a little something at Stewie. Come on now. We're just trying to give him a down payment so he can uh, have a damn I've, car. I've seen Nick Richard in the chat here, and Nick and I have talked about this, getting yes. Stewie into a car. Nick, we don't need anything luxurious for <laughs> like, Stewie. Hold up, though. Hold it's a up. climb, Stewie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we can it's always save this car when we make millions, right? right? right. I mean, this is how it started. Right. Right. right? A 2500 dollar Corolla. <laughs> Whatever it may Something be. Something to get him here. And Whatever back. it may be. We need to get from point A to point B, Nick. If you're the car guy that you say you are, <laughs> even without y'all social media over there at Go Show LA, can we make a deal? Help you with the social, social thing, too. Uh, yeah. They know. They know. <laughs> Go Chevrolet, G E A U X, Chevrolet.com. Get our boy Stewie into a ride today. Go fund me's out there. Check it out on our Twitter account. Yes, but if you have Instagram a uh, if you have a take, don't suck. Give us a call right now. 225-229-7741. You got a voicemail over there, Stewie? Yeah, I got three. Hit mm -hmm. me. What's up, Jordan and the crew? This is Clint from the Pirates. <laughs> the burning redfish shop. That cool front brought him in. Uh, we let him go. Shit. Uh, about 30 minutes ago. Oh, we'll go back to it. Yeah, it's like a two-minute <laughs> voicemail. <laughs> Have a take, don't suck. What's your name? Where are you calling from? It's uh, Drew from Brownsville. Drew from Brownsville. What's on your mind? Good morning. Hey, man. So real quick, I heard you talking about all the different coaches from uh, LSU over the past 10, 15 years. I kind of have a wild take in a way that John Brady may have had the easiest path to success because of the amount of just raw talent being produced at that time in the Baton Rouge area with the Woodlawn teams, I'd go yeah. and smoke LeBron James and McKinley and um, Scotlandville and Southern Lab, just so much talent in the area. But also with that, it was people were getting poached left and right. Yeah. You know, that that's just my opinion. And also, Jordy, were, were you with U High in 20, the 2012 season? I think that was Tim Williams' senior year. Oh, doing the radio? Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, well, you know what? I played on that East Ascension team that played after that Katrina. Uh, not Katrina. Oh, that yes. Game. On that sunny yeah, that day. Was a shitty day. Yes. Yeah. I remember that. Y'all had, yeah, had the running back that was committed to LSU that went to Oklahoma State? Yeah, Sione Polele. Sione Polele. Um, yeah, you know how big his brothers are? His younger brothers, uh -uh. they're both like 6'3", 250. Wow. He was a player, man. Yeah, they're, yeah no, he tore his ACL in That's fall right. camp, battling Tyra Kill for a for a change of back, change of pace position at Oklahoma State, and he just kind of fell off. But, Damn. Um, no, Damn. I remember that day because we lost our starting center that week. Half of us were flooded out, 
and our coaches decided, hey, we can't play Terra, so let's find someone to play. Oh, God. So we decided to find a team with five, four stars and whatever. So And it was like a, it was, it was like a Sunday day. afternoon, wasn't it? It was like yeah. – Dude, it was, it was like 120 I, degrees, I say, man. We played on that same day. We played um, Ascension Catholic. Oh, God. My, it was a was brutal, brutal day, it was the bro. worst. Brutal day. Thanks wait, wait, for checking wait, wait, in. Wait, wait, time out. Yo, yo. You, you're saying your coaches found a way to play Ascension Catholic and my coaches found a way to play U High? <laughs> on a Sunday <laughs> after a hurricane, yes. That was right, man. Yeah, it was yeah. brutal. Like, we that. lost Thank our you. starting quarterback in the first quarter. Yeah. Uh, appreciate yeah. it, man. No, Thanks for I listening. Tim Williams that day. Oh. Y'all have a good day. Oh, Gross. <laughs> uh, have a all good right, day. back to the voicemail. Tim Williams was he was a menace <laughs> his senior <laughs> season. He was a killer <laughs> his senior season. Uh, back to the voicemail, Clint. He was he was just going in. Stone. Yeah, I don't want to leave a message. I want to talk to you live, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Call back. Two two five two two nine seven seven four one. Wait, was that the rest of his voicemail? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> or was that a new one? There was a whole another one. Oh was God. that him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? All right, this is Abby. Though. Hey, it's Kaylin from Lafayette. Uh, I want to know if is LSU recruiting Dominique McKinley. He's a DT out of Lafayette. Uh, he just received an offer from Alabama, so I want to know if. As LSU was he gave my offer yet. So Perfect. If not, you know, we we need a recruiter in the Acadian area. So we might think about adding Kevin Falk to the recruiting analyst. Yeah. Uh thank you. Uh, Bi- uh Billy Embody's coming up right now. Dominic McKinley. I just looked him up. Six seven, two seventy five junior defensive end, defensive tackle from Acadiana High School. Dude's got his GPA 2.7 on his Twitter account, along with his phone number. He's <laughs> oh. ready to get recruited. No. He's ready to get recruited. That's got to be a burner, right? You wouldn't do that. <laughs> no, I mean, you got to, like, when you're in high school, they teach you to, like, you have to have all your information yeah. in your, like, bio. And Even your phone number? Yes, your phone number. It's been a hell of email. a week. It's been a hell of a week for Dominic, yes. though. Wow. And He's like, got an Alabama offer, South Carolina offer, Oklahoma, Florida State, Cal, geez. Michigan yep. State. Well, she was handing out twenty twenty six offers right now. I guess put wow. that phone number in there then. Yeah, I mean, like they, they tell you, don't have a Twitter account that like doesn't say your real name. Yeah, like, have your real name somewhere on there, like so people can find you. Yeah, don't be liking all the shady stuff. Right. Don't tweet shady stuff. Right. right. Absolutely. So a Which lot of things, you know. Yes. It'd be so stressful to be like in that era of social media mm-hmm. where like you were, uh, you know, you, you just would put stuff out there. Yeah. Stuff that would haunt you, you know? I mean, oof. Like, our mm-hmm. coaches would go through our Twitters. Oh, for sure. Like, they'd print them out and show them to us. I'm like, oh, damn, I didn't mean to tweet that. Yeah. It <laughs> like, wasn't me. Yeah. Was I was me. hacked. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who that was. <laughs> Antonio Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Something's up with AB. Uh, uh, CTE. Yeah, man. I, I don't. I don't tr- trust what that, that. That's not right. That's not good. What's going on? Uh, speaking of transfer portal, we talked a little bit about it. LSU backup offensive guard Cardell Thomas has entered the portal. Uh, that was confirmed on Wednesday. Uh, Thomas came into LSU with the class of 2019. He was as. Uh, I mean, I can't remember an offensive lineman as highly recruited out of uh, Southern Lab like Cardell Thomas was. Uh, he's been in the program for three years. He's got two starts. He's appeared in 11 games. Four. A lot of people would have lost. What's that? Four years in the program. Oh, I guess so. Came in with John Emmer yeah. and Stingley. Um, I guess a lot of people would have lost a lot of money if I would have told you four years later, Cardell Thomas had only played in 11 games and two starts. He was one of the... He was one of the prospects that came in that thought he was going to be an instant impact guy. Thomas had these he he had these um he had these clips during recruiting that would surface that were just like take on a life of their own. I mean like millions of clicks of watching this, you know, enormous guy run the anchor leg on the 4 by one track team for Southern Lab. And, like, just blowing by people. I mean, he was just this freak kind of of an athlete. But it never translated. 
to college. It never translated to LSU. I remember early on in his career, he got an ankle injury that really set him back. And it seemed like he never just was able to catch. He just was never able to find his stride in LSU. So hopefully, wherever he goes next, um, he will find uh, some success. Obviously, we'll be pulling for him, a Baton Rouge native. But he tweeted out yesterday and put on Instagram, growing up being from Louisiana, playing at LSU has been a lifetime goal of mine. And for that, I want to thank LSU for giving me that opportunity to achieve such a goal. And life growth is painful, change is painful, but nothing is as painful as feeling stuck somewhere you don't belong. I'm not, uh, I am not what happened to me. I am what I choose to become. Unfortunately, my time here at LSU did not pan out on the way that I expected, but regardless, I am forever grateful for the opportunity I was given. I believe in order for me to grow and be the best version of myself, I have to make a decision that will allow that to occur. That being said, I've made the decision to enter my name into the transfer portal. Hashtag forever LSU. Go be great, Cardell. Go get it, man. Maybe Southern. Yeah, I was about to say, I think, like a Southern, maybe a Southeastern, something like that. I mean, you know, he's from. He could play Tulane, maybe. Tulane, Tulane? Be, play, be in play. Uh, but I would just say that, you know, uh, and I don't know this, but just him being from North Baton Rouge, playing at Southern Lab. Uh, obviously, Southern Lab is right there on Southern's campus. Um, maybe this is a, a, a good fit for him to uh, get over to Southern and uh, get onto the field, but uh, be pulling for Thomas wherever he goes. Uh, but now that uh, that was official. Uh, yesterday, he is uh, heading into the uh, into the transfer. Great portal. high school tape. Great high school tape. <laughs> Great high. I mean, speaking of calling play by play for U High Radio, U High played Southern Lab out of district every year. We would play. I mean, nobody would play. It got to a point like where nobody would want to play U High. So U High. I mean, their their non district schedule the last five years we were on the radio was Catholic High, John Curtis, Southern Lab, a, a Car. I mean, like name it. We play, Rummel. They like, played Jamar Chase and give uh, me all the dogs. They played Jamar Chase and Christian Fulton wow. on that same team. Um, I mean, like they would play in. They would they would play everybody. Um, and sounds like Southern Lab. Does, Southern, does, and, does yeah, Southern, Southern Lab had the same type of schedule, uh, but we would go call uh, Ty Davis Price, mm-hmm. Cordell Thomas, uh, Damian, um, uh, the the the, the, line, the Demone linebacker, Clark. Demone Clark. Uh, Chris Allen. Chris Allen. I was in school when Southern Lab was on that run, and when I tell you, we found out that we were going to play Southern Lab in the playoffs, and our coach was like, we got to start losing games. Yeah. Like, he was scared. Yeah, you don't want to match up with them. Chris Allen was the miss for Mm -hmm. LSU. He was the miss from Southern Lab that, uh, look, and and look, all of those guys were must-gets at the time of their recruitment, right? Damone Clark was a must-get. Uh, Chris like Allen always, was a must get. Always at LSU though. Ty oh. Davis Price was a must get, and Cardell Thomas obviously was a must get. And to get three out of the four is a win for LSU. They got three out of the four, and Ty Davis Price worked out. I would say. Yeah. He worked out. Damone Clark, I would say, worked out. Cardell Thomas did not work out, and Chris Allen went to Alabama. He had two knee surgeries. He had two knee injuries. Ended up going into the league. Uh, early and I think he was fighting for a roster spot in Denver last I checked Um, but a guy that LSU needed at the time if you remember it was down to like Caleb on Chasson and Chris Allen were in the same recruiting class and they were hoping to get both of those guys Um, but they missed on Allen and were able to to land on Chasson and Allen went to Alabama and had he had glimpses at Bama, but yeah. he could just never, he could never catch it's on like, because the injuries yeah, hit, him, hit him right at the wrong times. It would, he would be coming on, and then yep. boom, injury. Yeah. Did he tear his ACL twice? I think he did. I think he tore the same one twice. Oh, man. Um, but if, he if not, it. he's definitely got two knee injuries. Yeah, he did it like in a championship game or like early. It was either one of them he, was like early in the season. The one first one, he was rolling. Yeah. Like he was. He was coming along. It was early in his career. It, you could see. And when he, you went to Southern Lab games his junior and senior year, I mean, he, was, he popped. He was unblockable. He popped. He was the best player on the field, and it wasn't even close. I mean, it was 
scary how good he was his junior year at Southern Lab. Let's go to the phone lines, 225-229-7741. Have a take, don't suck. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hunter Hall in Huntsville. Okay, Hunter. Oh, well, well. Yes, indeed. Oh, well, well. That's right, that's right. Did you hear old Willie Wade answer your questions? He did, he did, and I appreciate that. Uh, I think uh, Will Wade is down bad, y'all. I mean, <laughs> he is sitting there saying, uh, our Crimson Tide. I think he's converted. <laughs> Easy there, Hunter. <laughs> I, I tell you, you know, I, I, Jordy, this is all your fault. I think you brought up the 2001 30-point beating last week a couple of times, and uh, you look at uh, what happened Saturday, and you think, man, 40 is greater than 30. Uh, <laughs> uh, on a serious note, how, how much is this, this murder charge going to affect the program? Uh, that, that's bad. Yes, um, it bad. Uh, that's that's really bad. Uh, you know, I went up to Nashville on Tuesday and watched the game just because it's you know we got Brandon Miller and hey Brandon ain't gonna be there next year. No way. And uh, he's he's a special one, so you really hate to uh, lose this season based on a guy that's taken a couple weeks, a couple of times throughout his career, and wish whatever happens to Darius, you know, just. Be better than that, everybody. Yeah. Um, that's, a, that's a sad situation. I hate that for the girl and her family Absolutely. and her five-year-old son. But uh, I will say, uh, if I'm Nate Oates, there's no way I'm calling Ray Lewis on Monday and asking him what he thinks I should do. <laughs> Have you all heard that? Did he do that? Uh, he did that. No way. Oh, what? God. That's not good. He did that. Nate. Are you kidding? Nate, I, don't, no. I, I am not kidding you. Uh, at, I, I still Holy don't understand shit. that. I'm all in on Nate. I'm all in on Nate Oates, and I'm all in on Nick Saban. Everybody knows that. Sure. But, uh, I don't understand that move. <laughs> wow. He Allegedly. Did. I'm but, looking at this. <laughs> wow. That so, is. That is. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's. that's Nate, that is, be, that's that's out of the get, Les Miles PR book. Yeah. I, I mean, you can do a lot of things, but don't do that. Right. Right. And then don't publicly admit exactly. that. Exactly. Oh, gosh. That's, but, hey, we go to Como on Saturday, and uh, Nate Oates has never won there. So uh, do with that what you will. Uh, what else Como, on your mind? Uh, you know, hey, Bama Hoops, keep yeah. it going. Roll Tide. Thank you, Hunter. See ya. Right, I mean, I cannot believe this. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, like Nate Oates. What are you? Oh, my goodness. See, it, it was bad already. But mm -hmm. Now it just got worse. Mm -hmm. It's like everybody knows what Ray Lewis past is. So, you know? Jeez. Nate Oates, I just thought he's been through, you know, a tragic situation. And one of more the mentally tough athletes in my time. He went through a similar situation in Atlanta. He played in the NFL. He told me he thought the guys needed to hear that. He continued. Yeah. Nate. What, 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 Nate. But Rito has definitely murdered that guy, though. So, definitely. Know, like, I was there that night. Not at that bar, but we were in we Atlanta were at the really? Super Bowl that night. And we were in Buckhead. And, I mean, at around 11th, I mean, it was mayhem. May, I mean, like cops. Everywhere. Fire trucks, ambulances flying through downtown Atlanta into Buckhead. And people are like, what the hell is going on, man? And it was like old school news, make, like the way that word was traveling. Like there was no social media. Just there was just there like people there. like it was like word of mouth and like radio and television <laughs> and like people like Ray Lewis, Ray Lewis, and like, Ray Lewis? Huh? Like, what do you mean, Ray Is Lewis? Is he about to play in the Super Bowl t tomorrow? <laughs> and then they showed him in that jumpsuit mm -hmm. with the cuffs on. Can you pull that picture up? Yeah. Like, he looks... Like... That's all the time Ray Lewis photos. I mean, that is one of the scariest pictures. And no doubt he absolutely killed that guy. So how is it a similar Allegedly. situation? I have no idea. Then? I have like, no I idea. Like, I Nate, need more Nate, than that. Yeah. Nate. All right, what about Billy Embody? Uh, let's go to Embody here. 
Uh, is, we got him. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll take a quick break. Come right back. Remember, daily we're brought to you RMB uh, RMB Builders, Rhett Bourgeois and his crew. RMB Builders dot com. Hit them on Instagram. And you can keep up with all the projects over there at RMB. Rhett Bourgeois and RMB RMB Builders dot com. Lots to get to with Billy Embody. Uh, we had a recruiting question just come through from a caller. We're asked uh, Embody about the big six foot seven defensive tackle out of Acadiana who picked up an Alabama offer yesterday. Uh, we'll ask him about National Signing Day, LSU basketball, uh, Walker Howard going to Ole Miss. Lots to talk to with Embody next here on the Jordy Colada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. In a wreck, Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys is ready to go to work for you. Come meet your team. I'm your intake specialist. I coordinate your case and connect you with your attorney and paralegal. That's us, your legal team. Thanks. And we'll fight to get you every dollar you deserve. I'm your settlements and disbursement manager, and I'm here to get you paid on time. I'm attorney Gordon McKernan. Put our team to work today. Just call us. Question in that game. You're listening to the Jordy Collada Show live on YouTube. <laughs> Catch it every day, 7 to 9 a.m., wherever you have internet access. Oh my guy, the host of Mac and Q. You said you wanted me to close it out. I listen to his pod every day on WJOX94. I thought I was going to beat Charlie. I didn't. You were fantastic as always. Have a great call in Missouri. I'll see you soon, man. Thanks, man. Good Later. talking to you, George. Always, always. There he is, Cole Kublik, the absolute best. Don't overthink it, ABC. When you move to a primetime slot in the SEC, uh, is is getting that billing? Make this man the color commentator. He's the absolute best. Ooh, I mean, what a what a pro! What a pro! Make- I remember telling them, "Hey, listen, our, my job here is to make sure that we bring, you know, big time football to to a small town environment, right?" And and so you see on 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 um, you know movies sometimes about the way a, a town reacts to the football program and and uh, what it means to everybody. And, and that was the, the hopes and dreams that I had for the place. And so, uh, our kids, um, take a, a distinct responsibility in wearing that Z on their helmet. That uh, means a lot to them. Uh, and then, uh, on the flip side of that, uh, our community does a tremendous job of supporting our program, supporting the athletic department, supporting our school as a whole. Uh, and there, there's really a great relationship there. That's a lot of fun to be a part of. Thank you for the access, man. Looking forward to tonight. We'll talk soon. Coach, wait, before you go, fix your hair again one more time. <laughs> oh, look oh, at let's him. Let's go yes. here. Look at him. What do you think about that? Game day, what baby. What do you think about that? Game day. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. I yeah. love it. I love it, man. Great to uh, see you. Thank you. You too, guys. I appreciate it. Y'all have a great day. All right, man. There Not he is. Hitting. There he is. My guy. David Brewerton checking in. Uh, um... What does Harold Perkins do for this defense? What does he allow you guys to do? Yeah, Perk, man, he's just, he just so raw, man. Like, <laughs> all, all, all he know how to do is make a play. Um, <laughs> you know, but I, 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 I love him. Uh, he brings a, some, a certain type of type of juice to the to the defense, uh, you know. And uh, he's right on, alongside of me on the edge. He knows how to uh, rush the edge. You know, as a young guy, um, that's very valuable um, to the defense, being able to rush the edge, you know, making the quarterback step up. Um, but, yeah, they, they, they put them everywhere, you know, middle linebacker, outside outside rusher, uh, you know, maybe sometimes he's going to be in a drop. So he's very versatile for our defense. Young Ray Ray. A year to the day he would become the Super Bowl MVP. Oh, God. Aww. One year later. Man, that's. Killing a man. To killing Bowl a program. Man, right. Wow. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. Uh, Billy Embody covers recruiting for On Three. He's a great resource. You can talk to him about a lot of stuff, including basketball, which we will get to. We had a recruiting question come in from one of our listeners that we'll get over to Embody that we welcome into the conversation now. Billy, good morning. How are you? Oh, no. Oh, one second, Billy. One second. It's our fault over here. We were doing a little voicemail. We should have you now, Bill. You there? I'm here. Oh, yes. Crispy clear. (laughs) 
Uh, good morning, Billy. How are we? Okay, so we're in this second part of this recruiting swing with a national signing day coming up here in a couple of weeks or uh, uh, coming up the first week of February. Walker Howard news hits yesterday. Your reaction is what? I think in the end, somebody had to go, um, you know, whether it was Garrett Nussmeyer or Walker Howard, somebody was going to say, you know what, this isn't the best situation for me long term uh, to, to get the amount of playing time that I need to get the amount of reps that I need. And I think that's what it came down to. You know, I, I do think that uh, depending on what happens at Ole Miss uh, with their quarterback situation, a lot of rumors flying around on that front. You know, we could look back on this one and, uh, you know, quite frankly, laugh. Uh, in terms of just how it worked out from a depth chart perspective over there. But I think for Walker, I mean, the best opportunity for him to get on the field uh, sooner rather than later was to go elsewhere. And um, that, you know, that was just the reality of it. I'm a little surprised he didn't end up at TCU with Jack Besh, but um, to play in the SEC and to play for a guy like Lane Kiffin, uh, who's known for, you know, being able to get some high scoring offenses out there and, and certainly some buzz around his quarterbacks. Um, it's a good fit uh, and, and not too far as well for him. Uh, you know, just that whole SEC mindset that you know, they kind of have. Billy, you cover sports around the Dallas area. You've covered SMU for a while. How much did Garrett Riley have an effect on on Walker's decision, in your opinion? Garrett Riley, obviously the offensive coordinator for TCU, who was hired by Clemson. You know, I, I feel like if, if the Garrett Riley news would have broken a little bit later, maybe TCU would have had Walker on campus already and, and get, been able to get him on board. Um, that could have had an impact. But in the end, I, I don't think that necessarily had too big of an impact. You know, Sonny Dykes has his imprint on that offense, and, and he did so at SMU. He did so under multiple offensive coordinators, you know, making it look a little bit more air raid than maybe um, Garrett Riley or even, you know, Rhett Lashley, who was his OC uh, the first time around at SMU, probably wanted it to. So yeah. I feel like the offense and the offensive scheme with, with Sonny Dykes is always going to be, you know, pretty explosive for a quarterback um, as long as he has that, that guy. Um, and he's pretty good at finding him. Uh, they'll be able to run and uh, run run the score up a good bit and and put points on the board. So I don't necessarily think the offensive coordinator was was that um, big of a deal. I I don't think Garrett Riley and Walker had too much of a relationship dating back to recruiting either. So if that would have been the case, and it would have been a situation where um, he, you know they were heavily involved or something like that, then maybe it would have impacted uh, him a little bit more. But I I don't think in the end that that had too much of an impact just from reading the tea leaves do you expect spencer sanders to transfer to ole miss like a lot of the news is 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 kind of trending that he is I, i'm not close enough to it to to really know for sure or, or give you you know my best guess but it, it seems like there's a lot of smoke around you know ole miss wanting to add another quarterback even after adding walker howard so um with these quarterback dominoes it, it nothing really surprises me anymore quite honestly um, so I, I think, you know, Lane Kiffin likes to stockpile those guys and, you know, after getting a contract, uh, extension and a, and a hefty one over the off season, he's going to try to add whoever he thinks can, can help them take that next step, uh, you know, up in, in the SEC West. Billy, we've seen Kiffin turn water into wine with quarterbacks, whether it's Blake Sims or Jacob Coker or even AJ McCarron, uh, to a degree. What is his reputation within those circles, within recruiting circles, when Lane Kiffin shows up to a quarterback school? Does he have that type of cachet? I think he does. Uh, you, you look around the country and, and you try to find, well, who who are the quarterback whispers? Who are the quarterback developers? And, you know, I mean, people bring up Jimbo Fisher, but quite frankly, I don't think his recent track record shows that he is that anymore. And, and certainly his offense has backed that up. Um, but he's talked about Lincoln Riley certainly talked about, sure. and then you go from there and, and you're trying to think about, well, who's next, who's next. Um, I mean, Oklahoma state would be one that has, you know, had highly productive quarterbacks, but from there, uh, Ohio state is one that stands out to me. And then it's probably Lane Kiffin, uh, in my mind, at least. I mean, he's just been able to take so many different styles of quarterbacks and make them productive. Um, I'm not so sure. Uh, we've seen the success from his quarterbacks in the league um, because, in part, he's been able to, like you said, kind of turn water into wine. Uh, hasn't really had too many that have been at such a high level uh, that they've been able to sustain that type of success they saw under Lane Kiffin in the NFL. So I'll be interested to see what happens with Jackson Dart. 
Um, Matt Corral, obviously one that that stands out recently as far as, you know, can he sustain that even though he was a highly touted guy? Um, but, you know, I think he, in terms of college football offenses, whoever he plugs in at, court, at quarterback, it seems to do pretty well for him. Um, any expectations on National Signing Day here, the second go-round splash for LSU? I, I think the only one we're tracking right now, and, and, you know, there could be somebody that pops up late. You know, they're doing their due diligence, seeing if, you know, somebody didn't sign early. Um, why not, you know, can LSU get them on campus for an official visit? Can they, you know, fight their way into a recruitment? We'll see uh, on some of those guys. But the main one we're, we're tracking right now is Jamel Howard, uh, the big defensive tackle out of Chicago. Uh, he was, you know, a long considered a, a Michigan lean. He was a former Wisconsin commit that, you know, when the coaching change there happened, backed off that commitment. Uh, he's all of 6'3", 320. So he's a big boy in the middle, and that's what LSU needs. Uh, LSU, Ole Miss, um, I believe uh, Illinois hosted him last uh, weekend. Ole Miss is supposed to host him the weekend before National Signing Day. LSU is is trending towards getting that visit. They're expected to get him on campus here, um, you know, this weekend. So if he does show up, you can put LSU squarely on his list as far as finalists and and schools that are in the mix for him. You know, they're trying to get in there because they do need uh, one more defensive lineman, and and this would be. One that, you know, you can kind of allow to develop. Uh, you can get him on track with the strength and conditioning program and, and see uh, where he goes from there. But uh, there are a lot of schools circling him late and trying to get him on campus for official visits, and LSU certainly one of them. He's the kind of the one player, I would say, that we're, we're tracking right now uh, for LSU. Uh, Bill, we had a caller here a couple of minutes ago with a recruiting question specific down here in southwest Louisiana. Dominic McKinley out of Acadiana picked up an Alabama offer earlier this week. It looks like he's been on a tear here the last couple of weeks, picking up schools like Baylor and Florida State. Where's LSU sit with the Acadiana six foot seven defensive tackle? Yeah, I just watched his uh, junior tape again, and, and, I mean, really impressive. He just actually added a Michigan State offer as well uh, last night, so uh, Mel Tucker likes what he sees up there. I feel like he's somebody that LSU is going to have to pay, pay attention to in state um, just from watching the tape. I mean, somebody that uh, is a playmaker, he had a couple interceptions, you know, right off the bat. Um, so reads the play well, uh, you know, makes yard, uh, took it for yards after the interception and, and, and got a return out of it, which is impressive, uh, especially in the situations that he caught the football in. I, I feel like when it comes to, uh, you know, the defensive line, Jamar Candy did, did a terrific job on the edge positions. Obviously, it was kind of a tough cookie to eat with Deron Reed going elsewhere in 2023 as far as defensive tackles go. Uh, but they retooled with the transfer portal. There's not as much necessarily pressure um, to, you know, load up with, you know, let's say three big defensive tackles that are all, um, you know, highly touted across the country now. One of the guys that I would, you know, think LSU gives a hard look to uh, is Dominic McKinley. Uh, just looking at his junior tape, I mean, you look in state, and there's Westgate's to Myrian Johnson. Uh, there's LCA's uh, Melvin Hills. Those guys have been on the radar for a long time. There are also players though that are worth, you know, seeing how they look in the spring. Melvin Hills was coming off a torn ACL going into his junior year um, and performed, you know, well. I would say, you know, got them back to state championship. He's somebody that I still think, you know, maybe you bring him back to camp. Um, to Myrian Johnson has a lot of buzz around him. He's certainly somebody they're pushing for. They're pushing for both, I would say, but you want to see how they develop. Dominic McKinley, somebody they got to go see and, and certainly pay a little bit more attention to, you know, really think about offering. Uh, just by watching the tape, you know, who knows kind of what his whole situation is, but, um, you know, he's very, very productive on the tape and, and schools are recognizing that and uh, that size. He looks like a trim uh, 6'7, 280, if, if that 280 is yeah. legit. So, um, when it comes to guys like that, they're hard to find. Uh, there's not many avatars uh, at defensive tackle running around every year, and, and if one's in your backyard, you certainly got to pay attention. Uh, Billy, what about Fitzgerald West with the need for interior defensive linemen and the transformation that the offensive line seems to be going through with recruiting in the program right now? Uh, does he still fit at center, or do they like what they saw from him at defensive tackle just out of a necessity late last year. 
you know, I, I feel like if, if you're Fitzgerald West, you're probably better suited uh, to play defensive tackle uh, in the SEC. You do have some some tools you can use and get under guys and, and, and use that leverage a little bit better because he's not, you know, one of those powering guys. Um, as far as the offensive line goes, I think he's somebody that at this point, you know, with what they have coming in, especially, and, and they certainly were going after a center and Jake Renfro, uh, who ended up going to Wisconsin, you know, he's probably out of the mix to, at center. You know, he could be somebody that turns into something long-term, but when you just brought in DJ Chester, Paul Mabenga is a guy they're really, really high on. Um, he's, he's, you know, that those are two guys right off the bat, just in the signing class that uh, he's going to have to fight through. And that doesn't count who's coming back on the roster next year already. So um, I feel like you got to make the flip to defensive tackle full time. It gives them the best chance to get on the field. I liked what I saw uh, in the, in the bowl game against Purdue uh, from the snaps that he got, but um, you know, he's somebody that needs to continue to develop that explosiveness because uh, you know, Jamar Kane will find those guys that have that twitch uh, in the middle there. And and they certainly have two good ones coming back and Mason Smith and Makai Wingo that he's got to battle through. Um, so it's, it's a, kind of an uphill battle for him either way in a way. It seems like John Emery's going to come back. What does that mean for LSU's offense? What does it mean for the running back room? Yeah, I, I think for the running back room, you know, I, I think I talked about this uh, on uh, on another one of your shows. Um, running back was a position that I kind of pegged as somewhere where I would have addressed uh, with the transfer portal. You know, found some somebody who's kind of that home run threat. Uh, but with John Emery coming back, I mean, that's big. You know, this is still somebody that has plenty of talent. Uh, he, you know, has always just not been able to piece it all together, whether it's, you know, a fumble here or there or um, whether it was some of the off the field stuff, you know, earlier in his career. He's not lived up to the expectations. He's coming back for another season to, you know, give it a go. Um, my bold prediction last year was John Emery, uh, you know, topping a thousand yards. You know, this year I'm kind of thinking maybe maybe it's the same one um, just early on if he is, in fact, returning, which we're expecting him to. He, he just brings that veteran presence and, and I feel like, you know, he has that talent to consistently give them, you know, positive yardage and, and not necessarily um, hold back that running back room. It's a it's a room that has you know, kind of some 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 grinders, uh, Josh Williams, Noah Kane, uh, those type of players. And you add John Emery, another you know, big back. Uh, he's he's going to be able to factor in and, and certainly uh, help them. I, I just think you're right now you're kind of missing that explosiveness. Um in that whole room. So uh, they really need consistent consistency and, um, you know, being able to hold on to the football. That's been John's issue, you know, at times. So if he cleans that up, um, you know, puts together a strong year, could find himself getting drafted, but um, you know, he needs to, he needs to kind of get himself right for this one year. It's a one year job interview and uh, then go from there. Brandon Hollingsworth, hashtag ask Billy. Billy, what's the deal with Kyron Buddha, six foot three, three hundred uh, pound defensive tackle for twenty twenty three out of Saint Aug? Hollingsworth says he's at a position of need for LSU and he's in their backyard. Where's the status? Yeah, I, I, we he's one of those prospects that you hear a ton about throughout a recruiting cycle, um, but but not too much from LSU sources as far as um, them going after him. I, I feel like as far as in state goes in twenty twenty three. They feel like they've evaluated the the state well, and and you know they don't necessarily feel like they they want to reach on on a player just to take a player because they're from Louisiana. Um, I, I think they showed that at multiple multiple positions this cycle. You look at safety, you know they're they're kind of still poking around on a transfer safety. Uh, they could have probably had somebody like a Macho Stevenson or a um, Carl Williams or. Um, our Javius Moss in the 2023 class, all legit safety options. Um, and, and they, you know, didn't move on them. They trusted their evals. Ashley Williams, an edge prospect out of Zachary, they didn't move on them. Uh, so I think they've, they've, you know, looked at the 2023 class in Louisiana in depth. You know, they, they found some guys like a Dylan Carpenter uh, that they loved uh, and got him on board here, you know, right before uh, the early signing period. But that was kind of it. And, I feel like at this stage, if they haven't moved on him, I don't think they're going to. And I don't necessarily feel like it's it's a prospect that uh, they should move on. Uh, you know, the tough thing about recruiting Louisiana guys is, you know, they in a way, they love LSU. And 
if you miss on them, they want to stay and they want to stick around and they want to, you know, wear the purple and gold. Um, so if you miss you, you better find somebody that can, you're, you're sure is going to help you, um, in some way down the line. And, uh, that, I think that's what it comes down to is that, you know, at this point they don't see him like that. So, um, you know, I think he added an Arizona state offer, uh, in the last couple of weeks, uh, with that new coaching staff. And, um, that's a, that's a program that has some ties with, uh, Kyron's defensive line coach, uh, edge assassins. And, uh, it wouldn't shock me if he ended up there, but you know, quite honestly, I was a little surprised he didn't sign early with some, some program. Last one, Bill, get you out of here. Uh, LSU basketball is struggling mightily right now. They dripped, uh, dropped their fifth straight SEC game last night. Um, what do you make of where McMahon has this program right now heading into another conference Saturday? Yeah, it, it's tough. I mean, look, Auburn is, is such a tough matchup. They got it, I think, in the uh, it was like 34, 32 or something. Yep. Um, could be wrong, but um, they got it to that point. And then Auburn just, you know, quite frankly, did what Auburn Auburn does, which is you know take care of business. They're a good basketball team. Uh, they always have uh, an elite level of talent on their roster i think that's kind of what it comes down to a little bit uh with this 20 uh with with this season's roster for lsu they just don't have uh an elite roster and it shows in some of these games against the elite of the sec alabama auburn um it's it's wild uh that we look back and arkansas was you know feels like so long ago now after uh the run that they've been on uh, with, with five straight conference losses, you know, they, they don't have somebody that can shoot the ball at a high level from beyond the arc. I mean, another, you know, poor shooting effort um, from them against Auburn. So I, I don't necessarily know if it's a situation where it can be fixed this season. Um, and, and they got to find a way though, to, to write the ship and, and, you know, find a way to, to get more movement and, you know, out of the, out of the offense and improve movement. Uh, they're, they're not, you know, doing a good job sharing the ball. Uh, very few assists. It's, it's just kind of in a bad place right now. So they got to kind of circle the wagons and, uh, find a way to, uh, at the very least, you know, get some offense going, get something positive. Um, you know, our, our buddy Will Wade always said, you know, it's easier to get guys to play defense when it's, uh, going well on offense. So, um, they've got to find a way to do that. It, it's, uh, the offense right now doesn't have somebody they can truly rely on at a high level, especially shooting the ball. And um, I think that's hurting, you know, some of the team's confidence too. Billy Embody from on three, you can follow them at on three sports or follow him directly at Billy Embody covering LSU recruiting at Bengal Tigers on three. Got a great podcast alongside our friend Shay Dixon that you can catch up with, uh, with recruiting as well. Thank you, Billy. We'll talk again soon. Thanks a lot, Jordy. Appreciate it. All right, buddy. There he is. Uh, Katie's restaurant down in New Orleans. Remember Katie's Restaurant next time you're down in the Big Easy and you want to look for a little taste of the town. Katie's in MidCity.com is where you can find the menu. Great menu over there. Scott Craig and the crew, man. Uh, lots to choose from over at, uh, at Katie's in MidCity. Katie's Restaurant. You can find them uh, really easily on, uh, online. And then, of course, 3701 Iberville Street right there in MidCity. In the heart of it, great neighborhood, place to catch a, a beer and a burger any day that you're down there. Uh, get a, a little bit of a feel for the environment, a feel for the neighborhood. Uh, Katie's has been around since 1984. Katie's in MidCity.com. Scott Craig, great friend of ours, great friend of our show. And uh, we are always hungry. Yeah, St. Louis style <laughs> pizza. Yes. Get some. I want a burger and a beer now. Oh, yes. Uh, that sounds great. Hell yeah. Pre-9 a.m.? Hell yeah. I mean, yeah, why not? We, we used to eat pre-9 a.m., remember? Yeah. All the time on our food yeah. segment. We, we yeah. were in steak. We do weird stuff before 9 a.m. Yeah, we yeah. have done some weird stuff. We uh, used to drink with our food segment, remember, oh, before 9 a.m.? Yep, yep. Remember yeah, that time yep. I kind of got drunk accidentally? That sounds like <laughs> tailgating.com. Yeah. Football yeah. St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. Great early day. Oh. Mm-hmm. You gotta, you gotta be able to, you I gotta be the, able to measure it. Yeah, yeah, there you go. I yeah. get it wrong every yeah, time. Yeah, Katie. Every time you I missed get the mark. Wrong. Oh yeah, I really well, Katie, do. You, you know why your intent, your intensity is there. Yeah. Yeah. Katie, great intensity, and you're a great. You'd be a great leadoff batter. Didn't you not make it to Earl's <laughs> last year? I never made I don't know it. If she made it through the parade. Oh I my did. God. I had to. I was in the parade. Okay. 
I'm always in it. And David, every time he's like, don't do this. Katie, Slow it's, down. It's, don't it's, take the jello shot. It's a yeah. marathon. Not a I know. Sprint. And you I gotta, cannot get it right. You, gotta, you, you can't start the race off sprint. I know. That's right. I even thought with our kids with us, like, surely this no. time no. I'll get it what right. What an example. It's like I running the 400. Look at I mom. Know. What a square. <laughs> can't handle her liquor. I mean, they're in high school now, so they're like starting to recognize, like, golly, she can't mom's, a, mom's a lightweight. <laughs> Mom can't handle her shit. Yeah, I mean, we <laughs> what do you think she was like when she was sixteen? For God's sake, the opposite mom. is the yeah, thing. Yeah, no, but you can't you can't sell that to them. <laughs> no, now. I can't. No, 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 I cannot. It was not always like this. I like my mom's a lightweight. Yeah. <laughs> can't this hang out with year. her. My this mom's a square. I got to hold her hair while she's puking at ten a.m. This is my year. I'm doing it right this year. Go get them, Katie. I'm doing it right this year. Okay. I'll give you a little tips, See, little pointers. Yeah, See, I need them. I'm not, I'm not doing it. Right Stay away this. from the alcohol. I did it well, wrong. I mean, how can you do year. that in the St. Patrick's Day parade? Well, I mean, like you, you can do that Everyone's easily. Everyone's drinking though. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, you know? everybody Drink else beer, is squares. Katie. No. And you don't have to start drinking until you know you till you get like that it. buzz right. You yeah. can get that no. buzz right. Eat you something. Engaged. Eat you something solid before yes. you know. Get you a nice breakfast, maybe yeah. Iverstein's. There you go. That's a good idea. Freaking burrito. Right. Get you a burrito. Yeah. And then. Hit your drinks. Yeah. But if you drink pacing. too much, you'll see. Pacing. Pacing. Later. Pacing. I know. Pacing. It's the people that give you the jello shots. That's what does hey, it. I'm, not, I'm out on jello shots. Yeah. I'm not a big jello shot mm -hmm. guy. Me either. I like them. Like, Me either. And they're very easy to deceive as if you've yes. taken it. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, could, I could just squeeze it here and throw what? it. You know what I mean? Like, but that's, it's once solid. I've had enough. You know yeah. what I mean? And you get the guy, here, take another one. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, Gotta right, take right, another right, one. Right, like, but no how do you way, get rid of a right, solid right. shot? You can't just pour it out and it disappears. I mean, it's going to well anyway. <laughs> in St. Patrick's Day, I think that this is the day that we all, I, I'm not, I do not litter. Right. I look yeah. down on littering. Yeah. Same. But on St. Patrick's Day, when I know that the street sweepers yes. coming the next day, I litter. Yeah. Yeah. Throw I mean, it right? out. Yeah, it's, right, it's right. Like so Hell with it. Hell with the city. So if you're just throwing me these jello shots and you, you know, and usually you got like a palm full of them. That's true. You know, I guess I'll suck the face of the first one. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm just, you know, I mean, I'm kind of like with the throwaway of that one. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I can get rid of four. Yeah. I can get rid of this three. I need to. It was awesome, bro. They're great. They're great. They're great. I'm hammered. I'm, yeah, I'm right. scared. You're nerd. <laughs> Put your shirt back on. I'm scared of St. Patrick's Day. It I am is, not. It's scary. I, was, I, don't, I don't remember my St. Patrick's Day yeah. last year, so I'm, I'm going to play it cool this year. Yeah. See, you're like me. Last year was the first year that I had done like the commercial thing in a while, and I think it's highly overrated. What do you mean the commercial thing? Like we went to Uncle Earl's and oh, chased okay. the Nelly thing. That is yeah. not the way to do I mean, St. Patrick's went Day. That, thing. that yeah, was not tough. the. That's not the way. It's a house party. Yeah, you got to after around. the parade. Yeah. After a little bit of roaming, and finding a good place to settle in. Yeah. I will not yeah. go back to a bar. I will not go back to the to the, to the, the the overpass. That is. <laughs> Something I swore I would stop doing in my mid twenties. Ron lost and his phone. Somehow I got sucked back in there. Lost his what? Ron lost his phone last year. Absolutely, coach. He was. <laughs> I remember that. So he's. I saw him. So, my float passed him, and I was like, yeah, Ron. He's like, you, I can't get in. You know how the, the Earls has like the little like outside patio area. Uh -huh. He lost his phone. He was just sitting outside, just <laughs> sulking. Poor I was thing. like, "Are you all right?" He was like, "No, I'm lost, not. I lost my phone." On the one Poor day God. of the year that you would not want to lose your phone. Yeah, I know. and it was dead because was it's like, a weapon on that day. Yes. I was like, "Do you have like find my iPhone?" He was like, "It's dead." Ugh. I was like, "Damn, Ryan. what a worst. crushing feeling." He That's, left it yeah. on the bar. Oh, did it he ever up, find it? Yeah, he found it. They uh -huh. they found it on the bar. The next day? That's no, the same day. Like a okay, couple minutes back. later. We're, yeah, he was we're back. back. We're back. He's like, I'm about to just you go got home. got a charger? Wow. <laughs> He's like, I'm about to just go home. Because <laughs> the phone is dangerous on St. Patty's. A yes, weapon. it is. A weapon. Oh, yes, God. it is. Whether it's the cameras, the numbers, <sighs> the look back on St. Patrick's Day Sunday. You yeah. know what I mean? It's yeah. just like. <sighs> yeah, I got some photos. Coach, I tried mm -hmm. to piece together my day after St. Patrick's Day last year, and I was like. All right, these pictures don't tell any stories. Yeah, that's probably right. a good thing. Yeah, it's I'm probably glad. a good thing. <laughs> yeah, because you don't want to know the real story. No, you don't. <laughs> no, I do not. Random yeah, selfie yeah, with right. random yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah all right. Just type your number in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've twice played, yeah, I know you, played right? piano <laughs> for drunk people at my house after the parade. What's that? I've twice gone home after the parade and played the piano drunk. Okay. Oh, I mean, all right, Katie. That do sounds you like, like a good day. It's a weird thing, though. Do you to develop do. the piano okay. skills from your drunkenness, or is it like something that you've done? No, Date I've back to your kid. Up. No <laughs> way. Wow. Yeah, I can actually. She play. goes back to her roots. I just don't. What do you play? 
Whatever. I mean, I have music in oh, there. You, can you play anything? Like, you can play, like, whatever. Like, you can no, play, no, like, no, no, Piano no. Man. I can't sit down and just play it without music. I have to read the music. Oh, yeah. Like, it's been a long oh, time since I've memorized oh, oh, piano. So you don't have real Dude. Well, I mean, I can memorize it and play it, I guess, but I don't play enough. I mean, I was... Next kind of, song! <laughs> I was scarred when I was younger, so I quit for a while, and then... I like, like, symphony tunes or, like, yeah. commercial oh, tunes? she's no. playing symphony. symphony yeah, you play, like, Beethoven stuff? I could play, like, 90s, like, classic rock and, like, slow rock, too, like, for some what? reason. Like, what's your... What's your if you're, if you're if drunk... If you're drunk... If a paints a thousand words... <laughs> what is that? Oh, my God. <laughs> the gotta, rose, some say love. Uh, okay. We gotta, <laughs> so that's your drunk go to? <laughs> yes. uh, oh my God. Yes. I thought you would be playing like. <laughs> Turn the music on! <laughs> I thought you were playing like Dr. Dre or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> the Runaway by Kanye. <laughs> you giving me. <laughs> but I can try. Yeah, right. <laughs> Beethoven's 12th. Yeah. This year. This is my year. Wait, I'll did you see that. LeBron said he listens to Beethoven before games? No. Way. How big of a liar is LeBron? A huge liar. Uh, <laughs> you don't think a he really huge is? Liar. No. no. <laughs> like maybe that does it for him. Yeah. Classical. I can see some LeBron highlights and mm -hmm. some classical music. Because yeah, he I is art. He is, you're right. But wait. I heard that guy say Woodlawn's teams were beating LeBron. That is not true. Day? I was gonna say, hold on. And and he mentioned that Brady had the best chance of winning because of the talent that came here. That was like through one cycle. You know, that, that one year where it was Glenn, Garrett, Tasman. Uh, you know, I mean, who am I missing? Uh, Daryl Mitchell was the year before. No, Daryl Mitchell was a senior when they were a sophomore, so he was two years before. Darnell Lazar was from Woodlawn. He was a year ahead of those guys. So it was right in that little cluster where Louisiana, it was kind of like this offensive lineman kick that football's been on. It was just very rare to see the amount of basketball players and talent that are in one collected area. Still during that time, Chris Duhon, was down at Slidell. He went to Duke. Oh God! Uh, they had a uh, they had a forward at Peabody that ended up at Oklahoma State during that time. I mean, the state was producing high end. Was this the DJ Augustine? Really time? big time players. DJ Augustine was there during that time. Uh, Greg Monroe was there during that time from Georgetown that went to Georgetown. I mean, they had big time players coming through LSU or excuse me through Louisiana. Uh, just during that little cluster of time there. And, and look, LSU was able to capitalize on, on on that. They didn't get all of them. They didn't get every single one of them. But they got the crew that mattered, right? The Tasman Mitchells, the Garrett Temples, the Glenn Davises, the ones that you had to have the nucleus of that. Even Brandon Bass, I mean, was from Baton Rouge yeah. during that time. If you ask Brandon Bass now what his greatest basketball regret is, and it would be leaving early, in 2005 after his sophomore season and not coming back for his junior season in 2006 uh, where they went to the Final Four. Damn. And think about Bass on that team. <laughs> I, I mean, that's like, kind of like – You probably don't even – I don't even know if you have to – like what does Tyrus Thomas become if Brandon Bass comes back in 06? I mean, he didn't become a starter until midway through conference play yeah. that season. Six man? Oh, he would have been Our maybe seventh the man? seventh man. <laughs> like, I mean, like, they had a guy on that team named Magnum Roll that they I, burned I a red shirt on. He ended up transferring to Louisiana Tech later in his career. You would have never heard of him yeah. on that team because you wouldn't have had to play him. Was you this, could have red shirted him. Was this around the same time the Pelicans were playing their games at LSU? After Katrina, right? Yeah, but they were playing at Oklahoma State, Oklahoma City. They were if, practicing – they played a couple games. They played like exhibition, like yeah. Because uh, I, I came to a game. Yeah. At well, LSU. they then they still would do that. Yeah. Up to a couple of years ago, they would play like exhibition games over here. But um, they moved to Oklahoma City during that time. But it was, um, yeah. I mean, they had they had big time basketball. Yeah. Coming through here. I have, a, I have a question in the messages mm -hmm. from the mailbag segment. This is Alex from Thibodeau, Jordy. Quit being a drama, drama queen. <laughs> Stewie, what's more embarrassing, a grown man making fun of another grown man on Twitter or getting beat year in and year out by that same coach? And then he finishes it with, question, what is going on with Florida's football investigation? I have no yeah, idea really about the Florida football lot, investigation. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm guessing he's talking about the Jaden Rashada thing. Oh, with the NIL stuff? Yeah. 
I thought that was just a classic case of we I, have the money, but we don't. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, yeah. Where is it? I ain't got it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what do you mean you ain't got it? I ain't got it. We aren't paying you $13 right. million to come here. Right. Like, we just hoodwinked you. <laughs> right. Who do you think you are, Bryce Young? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> You're not worth $13 million. Um, yeah, what I, I don't that? know. I don't know the latest on that. I mean, I, I'd imagine there's going to be some type of fallout from it because yeah. these types of practices can't go on every single year. Um, but I mean, well, he's trying to get a release from his yeah, letter of intent. He probably should. He probably deserves one. But by the letter of the law, they don't have to grant it. Yeah, yeah. you know. Right. I mean, like that's. I think they granted it yesterday. They should. Mm -hmm. Like they should. But they don't. They didn't have to. Yeah. Um, and if it came down to they told him something that they can't produce, then they should let him go, mm -hmm. right? But I don't know what the um, I, I don't know what the investigation status is of it. And yeah. as far as what was the first part? He told you to stop being a drama queen. Okay, I get it. About I get basketball, it. I get probably. It. I, get it. I, get it. I get it. I get it. But I probably won't. <laughs> and he asked me about the he's talking about Lane Kiffin. Trolling Brian Kelly on Twitter, which I mean, it's Lane's deal. Like yeah. that's what Lane does. I mean, if he wants to troll Brian Kelly on Twitter, he's gonna lose to him every year. So the troll looks bad. And I mean, enjoy eight and four, <laughs> and the Egg Bowl win. Yeah, Shout out I mean, Katie. Well, he has to do that. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I mean, that's I like that. Like, that's that's his shtick. Right. I mean, like I have to, I have to let them hear me. I gotta sell this program somehow. Right. right. I Transfer I mean, to the SIP. That's why he was trying to get up in that fight with Saban and Jimbo Fisher last year. <laughs> should, hey, fellas, don't 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 forget about us. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm reading this thing on on the Jade Rashada thing now, and mm -hmm. it's it's bad. Yeah, but I mean, like it it looks bad more more. It for looks Florida, worse right? Florida, yeah. yeah, for sure. I mean, you promised the kid thirteen million, and you can't come up with it. I mean, thirteen million. What recruit is and, worth? And I want to say thirteen he's, million. He's I mean, like would you number... have paid thirteen million for Leonard? No, nobody. I I'd mean, go, like what? I'd go like, like a solid is, five. Who is worth thirteen million unseen at the college level? Nobody. Like how much <laughs> pressure do you really have to have exactly put on you as an incoming freshman? Mm -hmm. As if you do not have enough. Right. For the number seven quarterback in the country. Mm hmm $13 million. What did Arch make? I don't know, but I know Nico, I don't know how to say his last the name. The Tennessee guy? The Tennessee got guy, eight? he got eight. Mm -hmm. And that's like a true deal. Who's paying $8 million for one player? That's got to be the Cleveland Browns owner, huh? <laughs> I mean, he's he's a Something Tennessee like alum. It has to be somebody that is... I mean, I it just has eight million dollars that I can throw at some quarterback that has not taken a snap in the league. Coach, he's probably like seventeen. Mm -hmm. Holy cow, man! Eight million dollars access to it at eighteen for me. I'm dead. I got STDs, and I'm in jail. And, I mean, like, like those are the three options. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and all of the above is an option as well. Yeah. Or I, mean, I got a like, bunch of shit that I know I right, don't need. I broke out of jail with STDs and now I'm dead. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, give me $8 million at 18. What is going? This is about to be, I know. This is about to be either bad. the most awesome thing we've ever seen or this is going to be a disaster. Yeah. Nightmare situation. This is going to be a disaster. $8 million for a quarterback that has not even won the job yet. And we're talking about Tennessee. I mean, what if Hayden? What if Hendon Hooker says, "I, I want to rehab my knee on Tennessee's clock, and I want to get right before I go to the NFL. I'm coming back." What's old boy saying about the eight million that he's been promised? We're paying you eight million because you got to play. Yeah. Now you're giving me eight million to hang out. Mm -hmm. Oh, coach, I'm about to. I mean, <laughs> I'm dying again. <laughs> I'm about to put my feet up. <laughs> I mean. Holy cow, man. This is holy cow. Thirteen million, Jaden Rashada. That's on you, bro. You really think somebody's gonna pay you thirteen million right. bucks? So how much do you think UCLA is paying Dante Moore? He's a number two quarterback. Oh my god. And that's you UC know already? No, I don't know. Oh. But that's UCLA. Like that's yeah. LA money yeah, that yeah, yeah. a lot of people don't have access right. to. So it's like Yeah, there's no telling. If they were paying thirteen for the number seven, mm -hmm. what do they do for the number two? I know, right? I mean, man, what did what did Ole Miss pay Walker? Yeah, like I mean, what are some of these? Know, what do they look like? Out? What are they? 
I mean, Ole Miss unless have they, that kind of they, money. they uh, somebody does. Yeah. In Mississippi, what, they'll find somebody. So like, wh- who's paying not Lane? Somebody's paying Lane's salary. The school's not. Yeah. You know, I mean, True. that's private money. Right. I mean, so but somebody I mean, within the program mm-hmm. has cool. cash yeah. that they can tap into right. that they feel like is Todd Graves, Brandon Landry type stuff. For yeah. Lane, you know but I mean? we haven't seen any good NIL deals at Ole Miss so far. How do you know? We just hadn't seen them. Yeah. No, I mean, we haven't. But I mean, everyone you else know? has I been I mean, broadcast. this is Jane Rashada that's putting this out. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's the one that's saying mm-hmm. this is the deal. Yeah. I mean, it's not Florida saying... Uh, right. We didn't come through on thirteen million. Right. You know, I mean, like that—that's the kid from Tennessee saying, "I got eight million. Right. That's not Tennessee. I mean, Tennessee doesn't want people knowing mm-hmm. that. Well, but, I, I don't know because the Athletic put the the article out about the kid from Tennessee. Yeah, but who leaked that to the Athletic? It, it's the kid. Like right? the kid gets more exposure from that than Tennessee. I mean, yeah. if that's only one kid, Tennessee's got a hundred and five of them in the locker room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I would much rather that stuff say silent for one kid than having a hundred and four others going, he got 8 million. Him. Yeah. Right. Like <laughs> give me 250 K. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, it's, it, it just, man, I don't Oof, know what I would do with bro, 8 million at good 18. Lord. Oh my goodness. It's just, what wouldn't you have done? Uh, mm-hmm. Coach. Like what, if you give me eight million dollars, my eighteen-year-old self, you're giving me eight million bucks, <laughs> and I'm a D1 and football player, and I'm a D1 football player. So I got you know nobody's really over me telling me how to really spend it. Oh, uh, coach, you know, um, I'm probably buying a hundred thousand dollar car. Yeah, yes. immediately. Most I'm definitely. probably buying a some type of setup on campus that is awesome. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some like house, some type of like best house setup. I yeah. Right. Like, I mean, pool, the whole nine property, yeah. <laughs> like I need yeah. it all. SUVs. You know what I mean? Like ATVs. <laughs> I mean, like I'm living by boots. Yeah. Actually. Right. Man. <laughs> Y'all ride horses. <laughs> Me either. But we got them. <laughs> I mean, like just stupid stuff. Like, like but uh, hopefully you have two pounds of weed. No, uh, you know sure, what I mean? Like right. just <laughs> Let's off give me the finest chronic in Knoxville. Who's the biggest drug dealer in Knoxville that serves marijuana? <laughs> Actually, up? just call my people up <laughs> yeah, in right. California. I can call my people. Do y'all in take Cali. cash? Because this kid's from California, so he just pick up the phone. I mean, like, yeah. send, send what it a over. disaster! Yeah. Oh my goodness! What a disaster! But surely they have people helping them. You would think it. so. I mean, the colleges have programs. To you would help. think so. Like surely, hopefully you would your think parent... so. But what happens if he goes pro athlete and goes, "Give me my money"? I know. I want my money. Well, hopefully he's got an agent or a manager at that point too to help, right? Yeah, I mean, at you this can point, hope. they need financial advisors, Absolutely. agents, yes. everything, marketing team, yes. like the whole nine. Yeah. Rob Boudreaux, I got twenty five thousand dollars at sixteen years old. Ten minutes later, I spent nineteen on a truck. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. See, this is an eighteen year old decision. I mean, yeah. just like, I mean, I, Holy I understand cow, because when I got to college, my dad was in the military, so uh-huh. I got like the GI Bill, so I get a stipend every month. Oh yeah. Coach, I was. You blew yeah, that. I'm going. It was spent the, before you got it. I mean, as soon as I'm getting, I'm yeah, going to the right. mall. It's like, hot. Going by. It's oh, fire. It's like I got to get rid of this. Yeah. My mom would always say, yeah, like, be like, that money's burning your pockets yeah. so far." And I'm like, I mean, "Yes, just yeah. can't get rid of it fast enough. No. Got nothing to show for it. Oh, man, nothing at no. all. Just, just like, spending it. <laughs> like, oh, how dumb are we at that? Eight age? million dollars, Coach, to I'm, a kid who has not taken a snap yet. And he's going into Knoxville, Tennessee from California that he's got no idea about the culture. Mm -hmm. No idea. He's all, they love me in Tennessee. (laughs) They love me. On my official visit, they knew my name when I walked out there. Wait till they know your name when they throw a pick six, cuz. Yeah. (laughs) And you got eight million in the bank. Absolutely. And you're riding around in an S6 around town. (laughs) We actually (laughs) hate you. You know what I mean? Like... (laughs) Come outside, that thing's got a windshield bashed into it. Oh my this kid's God. driving a Ferrari on campus. Spray paint on the hood. <laughs> I mean, uh. Caleb Williams. How, how much do you think USC is paying him? Oh my God. There's no. Oh my telling. God. I mean, Talk how much do you think? How there? much do you think Jordan Addison got? You know, I mean, like. I'm looking at five to ten, <laughs> like easily. Just. They probably got like Snoop Dogg to pay that. Like, yeah, Snoop. Dr. Dre. Yeah, Dre. We need uh, Dre. Can we? You, can you set us up a slush fund, Dre? 
We just need five. Just where we can tap in and go get guys like Jordan Addison and Caleb Williams if we need to. Or if we need Caleb Williams to come back. Or if we just need to sprinkle him one weekend where he's got, you know, Instagram models from <laughs> Thailand flying in with Cliff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just... The world's crazy, man. Yeah, it is. The world, the, the college, the, the college. I mean, sport. I mean to is... be like, like Keelan Moses is sitting in the sweetest spot. You know oh, what I mean? Goodness. Like he's letting them like kind of all figure it out. Figure it out. Uh, two thing. years from now, I'm going to be the best player in the country. And I'm going to say, this guy's getting eight. He's getting 13. They're going here to UCLA for this. They're <laughs> staying 20. on campus here for you. Like just, you will be able to say, I'll take this, that, this, and that. Well, I can't do this. Well, sweet. I'm just going to go here. Mm-hmm. And then if you can't do that for me year in, year out, I'll just go to three separate schools Yeah, where I find it. Somebody's going to pay it. Mm-hmm. I mean, holy cow, man. I know. Holy it's cow. It's NIL stuff. It's holy crazy. cow, man. Just, <laughs> oof, gosh. Who was the one prospect that would have, Odell? Think of Odell in an NIL world. Oh my God! Odell breaks the bank. Uh, yeah. Well, just like what he, how he would have flaunted it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. I mean, it would have just been. I mean, clothes, shoes, <laughs> like just cars, yeah. cars, like driving up to the game like he's a twelve-year <laughs> pro, bro. Just Man, stepping out in an Armani suit. <laughs> like, what's going on? <laughs> Who else? Louis Vuitton handbag. Yeah. Everything. The whole. The whole fit. Uh. <laughs> Leonard probably would have. Leonard would have been. Sure. A, Leonard would have been a big time one. Mm. Joey, Joe, Joey would have turned into like a. Golly, nil's probably. We're probably lucky nil missed Joe Burrow. Yeah, yeah. I missed that whole group. It yeah. would have really. changed things. It's like Jamar, Justin, like they would have. They would have been making a million at least. Tyler Shelvin, Rice Company. Oh, for sure. Like that's all time. Just <laughs> like, <laughs> Delpit, Stingley, Queen. God, they were so good. Clyde. Uh, all right. Have a uh, thank you for being here on this uh, on this Thursday. We are dramatic and depressed about LSU <laughs> basketball. We get it. Uh, hit that like button, share button, comment button if you don't mind. We will be back with you tomorrow morning at uh, seven a.m. What's today? Thursday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What we got, Katie? Out of my league, three o'clock. Nikki Diaz coming up three p.m. We do. Uh, outside That's of that, today, right? Yeah, we're good. That's it today. We're good. We're good. We're good. That's we're it good. today. Uh, yeah. People have been asking about Roe. Where are my dogs at? Roe is uh, no podcast until maybe football season. Maybe bringing it back as a segment, but uh, no more. Where are my dogs at at this point right now? Uh, hit that like button, share button, comment button. We'll be back with you tomorrow morning, at seven a.m. Go Chevrolet, driving us every day. Donate to Stewie's GoFundMe. We got to yes. get him some wheels. We got four donations right now. Give you a car. <laughs>